Hello, welcome to Mimosa and Chill, Episode 3. This is Shannon O'Brien, your host, and I must admit that this episode is uncomfortably revealing at various points. Grown people are talking and you don't want to miss it. Please join us. Welcome, everybody, to Mimosa and Chill. Today, I'm with Kim Peters. Kim, raise your hand so they know who you are. I'm with my cousin, Melanie. I'm with my old friend, Stephanie. And I'm with my husband of uh, 29 years, Jason, on the right. He's going to give us the male perspective um, because we're going to talk about the show Married at First Sight, this hit show. Um, I've been watching since the very beginning. I think Stephanie's a big super fan like me. Yes. Melanie is um, caught up somewhat because she's watched it over the years because her daughter's a super fan. And then Kim is just getting familiar. Probably after today's podcast, she will go back and watch because all the stuff we're going to talk about. And Jason, how comfortable do you feel with the show you're familiar well, with the I, super fandom huh? of course i watch because i have to watch um <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm very familiar <laughs> I'm, I'm very familiar so yeah I'm, I'm ready okay good all right so um so we're gonna i got questions for you guys um in case i have some viewers watching this podcast married at first sight is a show where they take couples they go from city to city like one season might be in new orleans the next season will be in D.C. They'll go to that that city where there's lots of singles and they'll hold a casting call. And what you do is you come to the casting call in the hopes that they'll pick you to be married at first sight. And that means that you don't get to see your spouse until you actually walk down the aisle. That is the first time you will ever see your spouse. And so it's like an arranged marriage, so to speak. And what happens is during the casting call part, they're interviewing you and asking you certain questions about uh, your sex life, uh, the type of men or women you've dated in the past, your religious background, the ex, they have a soci- sociologist, they have a sex expert, and they have a, a spiritual advisor. And so they're trying to get as much background on you so that they can put you with somebody who's compatible with you. And so one of the things they tell you at the casting calls, they say, hey, don't come here looking for Idris Ilva. You know, don't come <laughs> right. for Ariana Grande. <laughs> we're gonna put you with the person that's compatible for you. So first, my question is, could any of you guys ever consider signing up to meet your spouse at the altar for the very first time, the person that you're gonna be married to? Hell no. 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 Uh, Melanie, why, why not? Why wouldn't you be adventurous and try that? Because first of all, that, that, that title marriage, that label marriage, that's a binding thing. And if I have nothing in common with you, there's no way I'm going to want to spend one day with you. Like, oh, let me ask, what if they've already interviewed you and they know that this person is for you? I, I, you I still, <laughs> no, I still want to meet them. I want to make that decision. Mm-hmm. I don't want someone else making that decision for me. Okay, so you have been married before. I'll make sure I put everybody's marital history so people yes. can know from what perspective you're speaking. Yes. Melanie has been married before. Now you are currently in a relationship. Yes. Okay. Right. So is that now that you've been married before, would you ever get married again? You know, I used to think I wouldn't because of all of the, the stuff that comes with marriage and the divorcing when it doesn't work. Uh-huh. And believe me, my husband and I, we've been married for a long time. It was not like a seven year thing. It was like 20 years. Okay. So okay. we married very young. We married when we were 23. So, uh-huh. okay. you know, we grew up together. And so um, at one time I really thought I would never marry again. I just thought, you know, it's just so much easier to walk away if it just doesn't work out. You don't right, have to worry right. about, you know, splitting, uh-huh property you don't have to worry about any right. of that yeah but then um as time has gone on since that divorce and that separation um yeah i feel why not i'm i'm stronger now i'm smarter now i'm more grounded now and i just think that i'm in a position where i feel that i i could marry again if that presented itself but i don't have to like i okay. could very much be in that relationship married without the paper. Okay, do you feel that that's where you are now? You guys reside together? You reside with your-, sp- with your- No, no, we don't. We keep okay. it separate, which okay. I like that too. Okay. Go visit, he can come visit. 
if I, you know, need some space, I have my space. So I, I, I you know, I'm kind of flexible. I'm in the middle of it. Yeah, I, I'd like that. That's how I would be if I were not married to Jason. That's I would never get married again. Yeah. I would never get married again. <laughs> There's no reason. <laughs> I agree with you, Shannon. I'm yeah, with you. The only reason you get married, in my opinion, is because you have to have kids. You have to acquire property. You have to build wealth. You have to co-parent. So marriage is more of a family institution. But if I'm not trying to have kids and I already have my wealth, there's no reason for me to really be marrying anybody. Well, it also <laughs> depends on, wait, it also depends on your value system. Okay. You I know, agree. If, no. if, if that's your, your value is mm-hmm. if we're going to be cohabitating, we're going to be involved in sexual activity. If we're going to be presenting ourselves in a certain way, some people was raised with the thought process yeah. that this is also going to matriculate. Uh, or cultivate itself to marriage, you know? And so that's just how some people think. And I don't think it's the wrong way to look at anything. Right. It's just personal preference. Um, right. You know, I'm sure it's going to come out about, you know, me dating a guy for about two months and decided to get married. Oh, sucks. You have been married before. You had, your daughters are older, they're teenagers, but you have been married before. So you're like, what Melanie said, you went ahead and took the plunge again. Although Melanie has it, she's open-minded like you. Yeah. You're saying, yeah. hey, I was able to do it. Stephanie, what about you? Because you're married. Would you be getting married again if you weren't married? I'm sorry, would you say, say that again? I said, would you be getting married again if you were not married? No, I, I, I wouldn't be looking to get married again. This really sucks not being on camera, you guys. I wish I could be on camera. <laughs> but uh, anyway, because I see all of you beautiful faces, handsome <laughs> faces. Um, here's the thing. It, it would depend. Uh, I agree. I mean, I think marriage the first time is about, you know, building wealth, kids, raising children. But if I found someone that I really, that second time around that I loved and they wanted to get married, um, I think for me, it's a value system, you know, having sex without being married. I probably would do it. It would depend. It would depend on a lot of things. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it's more of a, it sounds like it's a religious or, uh, yeah. uh, you know, it's like, you don't want to fornicate. That's right. What <laughs> that's what it's even though, even though we've already done <laughs> yeah. that before. Right. That's what I'm saying. I'm, let's just keep it real. You were 40 <laughs> before you got married. So it's like, you know, I know Kim is saying, but it, it represents, it, it presents itself as a, a binding, uh, respectable. That's probably what Kim was alluding to, a respectable relationship. Yeah. Where you where you feel like you can trust the person because they're coming home to you every night. There's no games, there's no when you know. you're in a marriage and, and they're not coming home every night. So I don't I don't want to label yeah. it that. Um, what I want to label it as when you have daughters, for me, this is for me. Okay. And, and because my daughters are still at the age where they're forming their identity, mm-hmm. I want to make sure I'm always in a place to be able to talk about relationships from what I deem to be a respectable place. Everyone's mm. different. Now, maybe when I turn 50 or 55, And I'm living my best life and they're a little bit older and they can see the transition of their mother. I may at that time see life a little bit different. Like I can do this by myself. Life is great. (laughs) Um, But right now, because they're still impressionable, I have to kind of display certain behaviors. Mm -hmm. And that's just me. That's just me. You want to be a role model. You want to be a role Mm -hmm. model to the daughter. Okay, Jason, what about you? Would you get married again if we weren't married? Of course he's not going to say Um, He's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a gun to his head. Well, what are you talking about? Definitely, I, I think that uh, if you're talking marriage, marriage at first sight, I think that if, you know, being a younger man, I I probably would try it because oh. um, not knowing what marriage is and just thinking, hey, that's exciting. You know, I might meet someone that I really like. But uh, you know, after being married, what 29 years now, I I realized that I probably wouldn't do it now. Obviously, because I've marriage marriage is hard. Oh, marriage yeah. is work, you know, if it's going to, if it's going to work out and it's going to last. So I think I met someone, which was you obviously, uh, 29 years ago. And I, I loved you with every fiber. So uh, to, to do that again, I don't think I would find that again. I don't think I would want to go through that again. So mm-hmm. for me, I would say no now as an older man, but as a young man, yeah, like I said, I probably would have tried it. Right. So you have the greatest love. Of all. You don't need to try love again. <laughs> Um, all I'm gonna say is I'm not trying love again. <laughs> not in that way. <laughs> no, I would I would want you to try love again. You know. Yeah, I like appreciate that. But uh, I'm Scott, good. Scott and Courtney. <laughs> you know, Scott still comes around even though he and Courtney are not married anymore. 
and you'll see him at Chris's house when they have family functions and the kids are there. Scott is always hanging out. And Scott's girlfriend recently gave him an ultimatum and said, when I see you in the room of court, it's like you guys are still married. I feel like I'm the third wheel. He said, oh, well, we're co-parenting and I'm part of the, you know, I'm, I'm close with my ex-mother-in-law and Kim and the sisters and Chloe and him are like writers. You know, he and Chloe hang out and talk like guys. So he's like, this is kind of my family. But Courtney's sitting right there. So the girl said, listen, you got to pick me or Courtney. I guess he, he chose, he picked uh, Courtney. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not Ooh. together. He said, we're not together. We're just, it's like family. And, and Kim, you're, you're talking about the Kardashians, said, right? It's like they're married, but just- Oh, not okay. Married. Yeah, I was going to say, who are we talking about? Oh, you talking about the Kardashians. The Kardashians, we, we, yeah. we switched shows here. <laughs> so I think that goes into Gabe about once you love somebody, uh, you don't necessarily pursue a new relationship with that same amount of vigor. Mm -hmm. And so he had a new girlfriend, a, a young 23 year old girlfriend, and she couldn't understand the complexities yeah. of a divorce and co-parenting. And she just wanted his attention. And she could see him in the room just being too comfortable with court. Well, that yeah. kind of goes back to what Melanie had talked about earlier. It, you know, that's a whole nother network system that you may not want to sever yourself from. Mm -hmm. that family that you yeah in that you know yeah. that's you know, a network that's just not obtainable right, right. and you know and men, men get comfortable you know when we when we really like something and, and it's comfortable we want to stay in it we don't want to leave that so, you know, <laughs> that's, where, that's where scott is scott's comfortable but did i make it comfortable for you i thought this was hell on wheels You're <laughs> 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 It is hell on wheels, but in the same, in the same it's comfortable for me because I'm that's how I'm used to. I'm used to that, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It depends on your tolerance level. Stephanie, how long have you been married? Let me see. I've been married 16 years. Okay. 16 years. I've been I've been with my husband for 20, uh, but we've been married 21 years, but we've been married 16. So okay. mm. I, I didn't get what everybody else is. Everybody on here married? Well, Melanie is divorced. That she's in a serious relationship. Kim is married. I'm married and Jason's married and you're married. Okay, gotcha. But I wanted somebody like Melanie who's been married and divorced to give us the right. pros and cons because well, Kim also can give some of that too. Yeah, because I'm more divorced than I am. Jason here. couldn't give that perspective. So I was trying to have a diverse uh, perspective. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so I have another question because one of the things about Married at First Sight and I'm going to give this one to Jason because he's a guy. And this is the problem that I'm seeing in past seasons. The men who, who start out saying they are not attracted to the woman, they never cross over into falling in love. Whereas I've seen seasons where the woman sees the man at the mm -hmm. altar and says, oh, he's not my type. And then she falls in love. Mm -hmm. So I asked Jason, I said, is this because Pastor Cow will tell these guys to say, I'm not attracted to her. She's physically not my type. Oh, well, hang in there. Marriage is more than that. But secretly, I'm thinking, Pastor Cal, you're not really being honest because I think men have trouble getting over that. So, Jason, I mean, can you fall in love with somebody initially you weren't physically attracted to? I think uh, it depends on the guy. You know, some guys are shallow. Some guys are, are deep. Um, I think that if you it depends on. So, like I said, it depends on who you are. If you're shallow, then no, I don't think you're going to be able to do it. I think you're going to resist it because you could think you're going to think there's something out there better. And why am I going to trap myself or, or lock myself down, you know, in this thing? And I didn't even pick this person. Someone else did. So I think the shallow guy is going to say no. But the deeper guy might give it a chance. And, and I yeah. think if you are deep, you're going to say, hey, uh, I'm going to spend some time with this person. We get to know him. And then hopefully it could blossom into something. Not saying that it always will, but it could, you know. So and I think, again, it depends on the guy. Shannon, I don't think that I don't think that question was fair because now you fine now, you know, so you <laughs> so you, to give your husband that question. First sight, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not a married at first sight. So yeah. I was, what if he had met somebody and it wasn't his time? He actually met me. So he knew. So I'm saying what, right. if you, what you were getting into, would you still stay? Right. And you're saying, Jason, yeah, I would stick it out and get to know the person. Are yeah, for me, I would. I would, I would stick it out at least for a little while, you know, to they make it. you make that decision within a month, you know, so that's pretty quick. But I think that I would at least try, you know, I'm on the show. I, I signed up for the show. So at least I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah. How, how likely is it that it will happen? How likely? What are the odds? Uh, it's pretty just, low, I think. Yeah. I've just not seen it. Uh, yeah. Stephanie, what about you? If you are physically attracted to the person, could you stay married to the person on the show? 
You know what? I could. I mean, for me, looks looks are not a hundred percent. It's about the person that they are. So I'm 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 definitely like Jason. I would give it a shot to see, because usually what I fall in love with is qualities. Um, right, right. You know, you 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 can be with attractive men, but if they don't have the qualities, then it's a turnoff. So I I would I would see at least get through the process. And, and I'll just throw my opinion in because um, I'm going to punt to Melanie and Kim. I want to hear their responses. But I will say, you said something, Stephanie, and I don't want to lose my thought. Um, I've never really been attracted to external. Mm-hmm. I've always been attracted to this. So, so anybody they give me, I'm automatically open-minded. Right. I've never been attracted to physical, which may be why God blessed me with Jason. He said, you know, if anybody deserves somebody who's physically attracted to you, because that's not where you put your priority. Yeah. So that I just all my boyfriends, when people would meet them, say, That's your boyfriend? Oh, you like him? And I'm like, Yeah, because I'm seeing something totally different. Right. But people on the outside are seeing. Yeah. What about you, Melanie? Uh, God, I'm trying, I was trying to formulate my answer as I was listening to you guys. And um, the truth of it is, is that there's nothing wrong with eye candy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just saying. Okay, um, so Melanie, is that basically saying you would try, but you don't think it would eventually happen? You just, if you can't get that. I think that women, I think that we women sometimes are different than our men when it comes to physical attributes and, and mm-hmm. finding beauty. We are looking for, we're looking for the same things. Right. Are, but um, we are more, I guess, forgiving of certain Yeah, we are, we are. We're yeah. more forgiving if if a man truly loves us unconditionally yeah. and is chivalrous and caring and understanding, that goes a long way. And, and developing a friendship and a trust and loyalty, that goes a long way with a woman. Yeah. Um, man will still value that woman, uh-huh. but will probably want to have some stuff on the side. Like right. he want to give her up because he definitely values her. Right. But he also... Like, wants to be physically stimulated. Wants yes, to be, he still yeah. wants, but I, I too want somebody that looks good, but has all those other qualities as well. You know, I, I want to look at you and like what I'm looking at. I don't want to look at you and like, damn, if he just didn't have that, <laughs> there, you know, yeah. we would be all good. I don't want to suggest plastic surgery. Wow, this is a shallow chick right here. Oh my God. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. But I'm saying that you you really, uh, for me, for me, I really want to appreciate what I'm looking at as well as all those other qualities. I mean, I have been fortunate like you and have had all attractive men in my life. I, I have dated nothing but attractive men, but... Um, those, I mean, I didn't stay with Gary just because he looked good. Gary was honest, loyal, committed, um, caring, sensitive, um, devoted. He was all those things too. So mm-hmm. I think that we can have, we can have our cake and ice cream. Okay. We just so have I, to be so ideal, but in reality, that doesn't always happen. And so it's yeah. like, they're trying to get, on yeah. very first side, I think they're trying to get you to look beyond the physical. But all those people that I saw on that show mm-hmm. were attractive. I didn't find not one couple lacking in anything. You okay. know, I thought they were they were mostly attractive people. For some reason, Chris doesn't like Paige. He says yeah. he's physical type. He's not physically attracted so to Jason her. Jason saw Chris's ex and see Chris is shallow. Chris's ex is a hot number. And mm-hmm. Jason said what it is. He's like, if I'm gonna get married, I want to upgrade the hot number. And so instead of upgrading, I actually felt like a notch or two below the woman I just stopped dating. And he's so worried about how he appears to other people. He's so worried. He's so, in his mind, he thinks other people are like, oh, you really lost out. You went from a high level. Not only only that, the man has a child with that other woman. So not only does she look good, he's got a child with her. I mean, so yeah, that makes it a little easier to decide, I think. Yeah, but why did you come on the show in the first place? If you were in that relationship, he was even engaged to this woman, this hot number. Yeah. yeah. Got her pregnant on the way out the door, came on the show and then found out she's pregnant. And the, the hot number said, well, I don't really want you back. I'm going to have the kid, but I don't want you. Yeah. And well, his- he's greedy. He's greedy. He's being greedy, you know. And his wife he, was on he the show. He could, yeah, he thought he could find something better. And when he found out that they didn't match him with someone that he really liked, 
he now he doesn't want to be on the show and he wants to go back he's to his a child. Ex. So he's basically a child. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much. He really is. He yeah. is a yeah. child, definitely. It's it's difficult to watch because Paige didn't have a backbone. She was so desperate. Yeah. I, what is out there that would make her so desperate that she would tolerate the way this man is treating her? And she has so much to contribute. You know, she did say in this last episode that uh, maybe she's just fallen in love with the idea of marriage. I mean, and she I, really I, wanted, she just got so hung up on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I, for someone that, that has so much to contribute, and I think he sees that she mm-hmm. has every quality right. and a woman that he would want and a wife, but it's not the physical that he's used yeah. to. And he, he says a few times on the show, I don't know how genuine he is, but he says, um, I'm afraid I'm going to fall in love with her. Mm-hmm. Um, that's because you're, you're going to look past whatever you think is superficial and yeah. you're getting to the root of the things that you actually want in a wife. Right. So and, and if he gives it, I, I don't know, you know, the, the show's not over yet, but right. I don't know how far this will go. Yeah. But I really do think that the experts did a good job of matching him up. I just think he's very superficial in terms of looks. Because, you know, he's a good looking dude. I mean, I think his head is a little big, but he's a good looking dude. He dresses nice. No, he, he makes is. good money. Yeah. So, you know. But I just I just think that the way he's behaving makes him not a good looking dude in my eyes. Yeah, exactly. And you know what, Shannon, you bring up a good point. Yeah. I, you know, I've dated guys that are uh, not so handsome. I've dated guys that are handsome. And I think the guys that I've dated that had physically good looks, the minute that some of those personalities come through, I am, I, I'm done. It's like right. all of a sudden the physical uh-huh. is, is not there for me anymore. Because yeah. So that's why I think I'm more about quality me because too. I'm you, I might be attracted to you at first with the way yeah. you look. Uh-huh. But if you start, if those qualities start coming through that I don't like, all of a sudden you don't look. And then I've dated guys that were not as attractive but their personality and, and their, you know, their attributes that come through, I'm attracted to. And all of a sudden I see them in a different light. Right. I don't see them as not, not attractive. That's how I am. That's exactly how I am. Yeah. Kim, what about you? Could you get past walking down the altar and seeing a guy who you weren't attracted to and still marrying him? Well, let me dial back first. I, I believe that this is a cool process. Um, I, I say that because I was married for a very long time and you can be married a very long time and you don't really know a person to a certain situation happens. Right. That's true. Preach. Yes, that's true. So I've met my first husband in middle, no, in June. Yeah. Middle school. I've known him most of all of my life. Right. As soon as some bumps happened, everybody's disposition changed. So uh, emotional affairs start happening, you know, just the lack of respect start happening. Mm-hmm. And none of those attributes ever was present before until a certain role came upon us that mm-hmm. we just couldn't travel anymore together. Okay. So I don't believe that you need to know a person for an extended amount of time to get to know them because you don't really know a person until you start really hitting some adverse times. You don't even know yourself until you hit adversity. Yeah. So, yeah. so- <laughs> If I had a spiritual advisor, if I had a sociologist, and who was the other person? On a show, would have been helpful. Yeah, that would have been helpful. Thank you. Because you make it tell me about stuff that's just predisposed to me that I'm not even aware of, just like childhood traumas, just certain things that can happen to you, and it don't come out until certain situations happen. But as as far as what we're talking about now, um, same thing. I think the qualities matter in a person. Um, I think like... um, Melanie said, I can is really nice. <laughs> right. But I think I'd be a little scared of it, to be honest. Mm. I would have to go back to what Stephanie was saying. I gotta, I gotta really kind of cast my my beliefs on your qualities. Yes. That's what matters because that is going to say if our value systems and our likes and dislikes are really gonna be congruent with one another. Uh-huh. You know, that's what really matters. You know, Absolutely. even though I met my husband a short amount of time. And we got married. It's like I have no regret because I don't believe marriage is this binding contract that cannot be avoided out. Right. <laughs> I don't right. believe that to be true. You know, so so I don't feel like I'm locked in anything. I think now for tax purposes, we're able to claim ourselves differently. <laughs> but, uh, for the business component of us, 
it right. comes in handy, right? But as far as this being some type of death sentence, I don't see it as that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can, that's why I can get in very quickly and I have to, I know where the courthouse is. <laughs> Come on, Kim. Yeah, see, I just don't even want Kim. I just don't even want. I just would not even want to go through that whole thing. Mm. And that is just like. That's why. I mean, I could marry, which is the, you know, I answered the question. I could marry, but is it a necessity? No, mm -hmm. that's it's not a thing. necessity. Yeah, it's not a necessity. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you know, and that's the thing. I, I think it's a necessity for me. And this is only me. This is only me. You know, and maybe I'm a little old fashioned. I always say to myself, you know, well, we're going to be intimate. What is this? Yeah. You know, I start questioning myself. Right. And that kind of goes back to just my value system. Right. Right. And so, you know, again, if I get older, you know, my value system may change. Right. It will. But that's the only, I think that's the only reason why I got kind of married is because we were hanging out. Um, we started becoming really serious. We started uh, dealing with some real rough issues very early on in our relationship. So our character was really kind of present early on. So mm -hmm. we're dealing with some adversity immediately, mm -hmm. right? And then he saw that, wow, Kimberly is 10 toes planted. Kimberly is fervent. Kimberly's not going anywhere. Kimberly's going to tackle things head on. She's not bowing down. Her head is unbowed. Wow, that's a trooper that I would like to have on my squad, right? Right. right. You know, and then for him, I kind of saw him like, wow, you know, you know, you are a very compassionate kind of guy. You're a very loving kind of guy. But that was really it. I don't feel that love is challenging. Life is. You know, mm -hmm. I don't I don't think marriage is challenging. Mm -hmm. I think life is. And so mm -hmm. as life is happening, you're going to, you know, your, your soul is going to get shook. Because uh -huh. right? that's life, right? And it, it is your love that you hope is strong enough to weather you through it. Right. So I don't really love, I don't, so kind of like uh, Melanie, what you're saying, I don't, my love, I don't want to have headaches and hardships in my love. That's not what love is. Life can give you that. Uh -huh. But when you come home, you, you want everyone to have, you know, <laughs> we had once once you walk into your house you know you may be blooded blood <laughs> scarred down my life. <laughs> but you want the person laying next to you to get you a glass of water and lick your wounds you know <laughs> and, but at the same time love love can be a little little rough when you're trying to get stuff in line <laughs> and that that's when so you're cool. trying to say do we want to do this because we got to go through this right here because love is always going to be pleasant at the moment it's not pleasant we don't have to do this right right so this is not a binding contract <laughs> so, <laughs> and see, kim, you you also bring up something kim when you said you know that um past traumas and things like because you don't know until you know you right, don't know right. this is a problem until it's a problem. Yeah. But see, in the show, Love at First Sight, or Married at First Sight, you marry these people with whatever traumas they have mm -hmm. and whatever trauma you have. Mm -hmm. Now, in a traditional kind of relationship, you're going to go down this journey together, getting to know some of these traumas and going to have some of these experiences and these, and you're going to hit that deal breaker without mm -hmm. already being bound in a marriage. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so with the show, it's, they're married. They're gonna marry them based on the experts, you know, um, opinion that they are a good match, but they don't know how I've dealt with my trauma. They don't know how that person has dealt with his or her, their trauma. And so you put these two traumatic people together and all of us carry trauma, right? right. And we all deal with it differently. So, but me going into a marriage, a marriage, an arranged marriage, not knowing those things, those sensitive things, that that's a roadblock. That's like, no, I want to know. I want to get to know you. I'm going to spend a year, two years, three years, four years, whoever long, until I'm comfortable enough to say, okay, I'm ready to tie the knot. And he's going to be, okay, I'm ready to tie the knot. But in the situation of this show, they don't get that. They're right. like, we're going to just, we're gonna just go for it, both feet in. Yeah, that's yeah. why I couldn't do it. Go <laughs> ahead, uh. yeah. Jason. I, I was thinking. I was thinking that uh, Shannon and I were talking about this the other day. That you know, arranged marriages are not uh, a new thing. You know, people have been doing right. this for hundreds of years. Yeah. But the difference I think is that 
the families back in the day decided that they were going to come together and bring these two kids together versus a show and the families don't know about it. They hear about it afterwards that these mm -hmm. kids are married and that they're, or not kids, but adults are married that, and they're going to be together regardless of what the families think. You know, so I think the families can help in the, in the, in, in, in shepherding the whole marriage. Whereas in the, in the, the show, they're not always on board, you know, and you might meet these parents yeah. that say, well, I don't really like this guy or this lady. Right. Um, so that doesn't help, you know, and sometimes that's a deal breaker for uh, some of the participants. So yeah. I think that's a difference there. Yeah. But that's all for, oh, just a normal situation. You, uh -huh. you can have a person in college and they're dating and the mother have a great disdain for the girlfriend. Hoping yeah. to God you don't marry this woman. Right. right. And, and then that family is just never on board. Yeah. Well, that's you know, my situation. <laughs> but Jason, no, this, this, this show can really kind of be a micro. <laughs> okay, this show can be a microcosm of like real kind of life that you just have to kind of really just take a leap. Yeah. But you, you know, know, at the end of the day, you know, and I think that's how Jason and I were. It's like, well, you know, it, it to me, if if a man is a man and he's an adult and he knows what he wants, then it, I feel like the parents should just hold your tongue for a minute and see yeah. how this goes because you don't want to do something in the beginning that you can't take back. Mm -hmm. So I think folks were showing out when we got married because they thought, oh, she ain't going to be here. Now it's 30 years later and folks are looking like, oops. <laughs> I, have I know I should have brought a gift. Like, I know I should have brought a gift. Created some drama and trauma that Jason and I can't forget. Mm. And then so you mess yourself up. So I learned as a mother Never mess with my son's fiance's girlfriends. Just keep my mouth shut. Yeah. One day she'll have your grandchildren and then she will be remembering everything you said. <laughs> so I, I've That's learned right. that there's a pecking order in a man's life and I don't want to be on the outs of my son's life. Mm. Right? Mm. <laughs> I mean, Jason, you want to add or you complete the fit? No, I, I agree with that. I think that... Uh... You should let uh, our son pick who he's going to pick. And if he's, <laughs> if, he's, if he's chosen right, if he's chosen wrong, let that be on him and not on you. Because, right. you know, there's, there'll be resentment if it's you right. might, uh, getting in the business all the time. And, and mm -hmm. you know, and that's how I feel. I'm going to let him make his choice. And I hope that I really like this girl, but a woman. And, and if I do great and if I don't, you know, oh, well, uh, you know, yeah. that's my son's choice. You know, yeah. 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 And if I could piggyback on that, I know what my daughter's relationship I oftentimes have to make it very clear to him. I like you because my daughter likes you. Uh -huh. Right. I, I can't get into the minutia of things. Uh, <laughs> once I invite him everywhere, everywhere I am, he is, right? Because I kind of fast forward it because just in case they do get married, right? <laughs> They're going to have um, kids and that's going to be my grandchild. And I don't want to cause any type of dysfunction. Right. Uh -huh. Right. Surrounding that situation. Right. You know, so I don't. So when she's talking to her, me about her, the relationship, I'm just smiling and I'm looking at every <laughs> aspect of the relationship. And I'm not really, you know, she's not asking me my opinion. She's not asking me, do I like them? Uh -huh. And I don't have right. to. Uh -huh. right? <laughs> I don't have to. So right. kind of going back to what, you know, Jason just said, you know, I would hope I would. But, you know, it's not my choice to make. <laughs> Very well said. Stephanie, you want to add to that? I heard Stephanie throwing well, some. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, I, I got some baggage with that one because I haven't liked anybody uh, that my son is dealt with. Oh, oh. Um, I was you know, yeah, about the yeah. married at first sight. And uh, we're talking about being educated and things like that. Well, this is one couple, and I can't remember the woman's name, um, but she's with this guy and he's trying. Kelly, Stephanie, maybe you could tell me. The guy who's trying, the, his wife wants to have sex and he doesn't want to have sex with her yet. Oh, um, Claire, and Claire and Ryan. Claire and Ryan. She's okay. the blonde. She's the stu airline stewardess. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think. Who knows this show? Yeah, she does. And I'm glad he's helping me with the names because <laughs> Claire, was it Claire and Ryan, right? Yeah. Okay. She's wanting to have sex with um, him and he's saying, let me get to know you more. Yes. So she's, she's frustrated because she's thinking, oh, he doesn't want to have sex with me. Oh, am I not attractive? Oh, and so I, I was looking at her like, just calm down. You're going to be married to him forever. I, I know, but I got to add something to that. The problem I'm having is he is accepting oral sex from her. Okay. So, you know, that's a little condescending. Is huh? he giving it back? 
Is it? Mutual? I don't know, but that was the last in the last show. Is he is he, was, giving it, is he giving is he giving it back? Like <laughs> my question is. No, no, she's giving him, she goes over to, you know, because they're all staying in the same apartment complex. So she goes over to talk to the other young ladies and she reveals to them, even though we are not having sex, I'm providing him with oral sex. And so that bothers me. That's out. Bothers me. Yeah. Let me explain, Stephanie. That's kind of where I was going with this because I thought they were both mutually fooling around and doing little things, but not having sex. Right. And so that's now that. you tell me something like that. I'm like, okay, now I'm really um, <laughs> I'm about what I'm about to say. And I was right. Jason, I said, I think, and Jason agreed with me. I said, what it is, is that she didn't develop herself intellectually. Mm-hmm. So the only game she got, she's a one trick pony. I'll jump on your, I almost said jump on your. Right. <laughs> 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 All right. I don't want to, my YouTube to be that bad, but that was, that's her go-to. Mm. somebody yeah. said what you got in your box besides jumping on it mm. yeah 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 like, oh, i don't really have anything else hey i can do this drop your pants she said yeah. that's her only and so when we're talking about college and helping your kids develop you do want your daughters and your sons to have something up here well, when all of this goes away right <laughs> and well, I, I think college is part of that or being intellectually challenged or being independent or being out there working and establishing relationships and building relationships but I think there is a shortage. Um, and I said this to Jason, I think there's a shortage of depth. And I don't know if it's, this, <sighs> yes. know, but there's a, sh- it's unusual for a woman to be deep. We put so we, we came up in the internet era. These, these women, they've been watching, uh, what is it? The stallion, uh, the Kardashians, and everybody's trying to be cute. They yeah. forgot to read a book. When I lived in DC on the train, we all read books. I used to read three books a day. <laughs> when I was a kid, I read books. And so I'm like, they don't, they don't read books. They don't, um, they're not really knowledgeable about art, culture. We we're talking about that earlier. They don't, they don't, they, they're not immersed in culture, art. They don't read books. They don't study history. They don't read nonfiction. So they don't read other people's challenges and how they've overcome. I love nonfiction um, autobiographies because they inspire me. I actually right. make decisions in my life based on people who I've seen some of the moves they've made through reading their stories. And I right. think that um, I'm looking at this girl on the show and I'm saying, wow, your mother didn't help you become deep. Yeah. Nobody told you, girl, open a book, close your legs and open a book. Well, are, yeah. <laughs> I have a question in there. I have a question. Okay. Is she a one trick pony because you're perceiving her as a one trick pony? Yeah. No, I, he perceived her. He took her to a donut shop and tried to, because she loves donuts. He took her yeah. to the donut shop and tried to have a conversation with her. She said, I feel like this is one of those timeshare meetings. Yeah, okay. yeah. So then my question will become my, my question will become is this show is this show scripted then? Because if you're telling me a sociologist, a relationship coach, and a spiritual advisor have came up with some type of scientific method that this is going to be my ideal person, and you're telling me when they're sitting down, the congruency amongst them is, is mirroring you being at a timeshare presentation, I would ask is this show scripted? Because that wouldn't appear to be his ideal person. I said that because I, I think they screwed Paige. I think they screwed her by giving her credit. Mm-hmm. I think they screwed him. He was looking for a woman with more depth. And at one point, I think he said something about, I got married because I want to be married forever. Yeah. And I think, I think what women are forgetting, uh, if he wanted to screw around, he could have just stayed single. Yeah. Right. yeah but, and also, and get it, and get okay. it so he come on, Jason. Let's hear from you, Jason. Come okay. on, Jason. Well, I think. I think that Ryan is, is, is religious, you know, and I don't think that yeah. his match is, what's her name, Karen? Yes, she's not into religion. Claire, Claire. Claire, I'm sorry. I'm so used to hearing Karen these days. So, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> so Claire, um, I, I want to know, I wouldn't be mad at Ryan about the whole thing that he, he's doing because now if he, did he ask for that or did, did Claire offer it? Because to me, that's a difference. Right. Yeah. I think she offered it because she's trying to. I think so too. I think that's what she she sex. uses. Right. She's yeah. like, okay, well, she can well, offer you it. Can't, you can't blame offered. Ryan for, for accepting that. I mean, come on. Yeah. And, and ain't too many men gonna turn that down. Let's be right. let's be real. <laughs> let's, get, let's get real on that. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. If, if sex is your go-to, you're in trouble because any woman can offer you sex. Right. Not everybody can connect with you up here and here and emotionally. Yeah and um, intellectual. Mm-hmm. So that's always going to be, um, that's always going to be strong game. Yeah. To me, your brain and your heart, 
can overrule sex. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I think I think laughter too, you guys, because I know plenty of guys that you know they'd say, "Okay, she's smart," you know, she's cute. But then I could make people, Shannon, you I, you grew up with me. I could make people laugh. Yeah, and that was a that was a key thing for me when it came to men because I was like, she's kind of funny. So well, humor is intellectual. Yeah. Kim, Kim, I wanted to say that Kim, I think you're you're right when you talk about the show being scripted because you know what, if there if the show is really truly about connecting people um, for a lifetime relationship, then they're not going to put these people together that right. clearly don't fit. Well, I thought it was weird, but I've seen other couples instantly they're connected. Some of them have even had babies. The ones on previous, yes. they have like three or four kids. So I, I know that they've done it successfully, but I, I was, I think what happened is Ryan and somebody was at the audition and didn't give their full story. Yes. The show is not going to be entertaining unless it has drama. No, yeah, I hate the, you need to watch the show. And I think that's part of the problem. She's not watched the show. I've watched enough. No, you need to watch that scene. <laughs> yeah. People understand because it's I, not no reality TV. This this is not scripted, honey. These people, there's people on the show from season one, and now have two kids. And they, I know, I, I'm sure, I'm sure some of them are not right? right. But you have to put when you tell me the two people are sitting there, and it it appears as if it's a a timeshare presentation. That's she was being sarcastic because she was asking her, "What would you like to do with your life?" She said, "I'm good." Yes. Yeah. Have you ever thought about going back to school? She was eating a donut. She said, "I feel like this is a timeshare." I said, "That's why his dick's not." Oh. Oh. <laughs> his it's not hard because I'm trying to talk to you and you sound like you're 13 years old so the now, question I'm gonna sit here I just I don't want to go to college he's looking like they gave me this for a wife yeah he's not attracted to her yeah he's not attracted. that's where I said <laughs> and that's when I would say that they they did that they intentionally did I that. think they misrepresented themselves yeah I, what, what I get mad about what I get mad about on the show make a cut what I get mad about on the show is that Pastor Cal doesn't step in and say, look, no, you need no. to you need to, to wake up here. This is what's going on He's and kind of guide them. Yeah. Because if they if they truly want this to, be, to work, you know, I think they need to step in as spiritual advisors and psychologists okay. and say, hey, look, you're going down the wrong road or this, this person is missing this from you. Well, well they, they do meet up. with them. They do meet with them when they going into trouble. But what 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 I didn't understand is when Chris and Paige, when that happened with the baby, that would have been seen over. I mean, we would have been done, but we're continuing this dialogue between these two. Uh -huh. And it's like, what, el what, is, what else is there to talk about? Uh -huh. You're having a baby by another woman. Uh -huh. We are married. Let's get this annulled and let's go. But I, I right. wonder if it's because it's ratings, because we're all tuning in every week to see what right. happens between Chris and Paige. Right, right. But I don't think they intentionally, <laughs> them. I think that would be sinister. And it would be mm -hmm. to put people together purposely who aren't compatible. So yeah. what, what I'm thinking is that somebody is misrepresenting and yeah. that these, these experts aren't really experts because they're not able to read between the lines. Sometimes things that aren't said speak volumes. Yeah. Things that you don't see. I always tell Kim, I said, I can look at your resume. You can say, oh, I own a bank. And then I can look at your car and I can look at how you conduct yourself so you don't own no damn bank. <laughs> because I'm look, I can see your whole picture people can tell right. you anything but you right. have to look at the whole that's why it's called emotional intelligence you have to be able to read between the lines and see emotional intelligence emotional I love that. Intelligence. Mm -hmm. and i think that um that's what we're missing in these experts mm -hmm. they're not research she says she wanted this but then it looks like she just wants a boyfriend i remember the first day they got married he said well what are you looking to get out of what are you what is your fear remember stephanie and she said mm -hmm. my fear is that i'll fall in love with you but you won't love me back yeah, she sure did say that. Explains why yeah. she's trying to put it on him. Because Jason yeah. said in the past that was her game. Mm -hmm. She bringing her a game. She must be really good at that. Yeah. And she's like, I'll get you. I'll get you to love me. Now pull down your pants. And he's like, no, whatever worked in the past is not working here. I married you. So yeah. I'm going to pull my pants up. Let's have a conversation. And that's where the problem is. <laughs> he's like, uh, she's talking to the experts. Like, I'm trying to, I need, I need to, this is the, this is the only game I got here. I need to really yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah, you know, she needs to get some more skills in the toolbox. Yeah, yeah, that that, that right. game's not working for her because she's not getting anything out of it. That's 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 not a game that's working for her. Yeah. No, well, well, she did make a comment. She did make a comment that all her relationships have just been about sex. I don't think she's had a actual true exactly. connection unless it was sex, and right. that's what she's used to. And that and that's sad, you know, that you not you haven't had at least one 
relationship where sex didn't bind you. Everything right. that she's experienced has been about great sex, and then she they move that. on. Yeah, she said that. Right. She did say and that. And obviously, it's not that great because awesome, the head game ain't there because he's Ryan's still not feeling her, you know. So. Yeah. <laughs> but no, but you know what? I think at the end of the day, yeah, at, at the end of the day, men like sex, but at the end of the day, they really want, especially when they're looking for a wife, sex mm -hmm. ain't going to hold you into a marriage. You have to bring some type of substance. So even if your sex is the greatest sex in America, I think <laughs> men ultimately want somebody that they can connect with. Right. Right. I don't know. I'm not a man. Jason, you can, you can tell I, me. I'm, I, I'm can, lying. I concur. I concur. <laughs> Steph, you, definitely. I can't tell you. <laughs> you can but tell I, me. I, I, think that's true. No, I, I, I agree. And I think that that's a, that's a thing too for me. And this is when people say I'm very liberal. I'm like, you know, if Jason got married again, I wouldn't have a problem with that. You know, we'd still be friends. We're going to always be friends because we do connect mentally. Yeah. It's just that Jason wants to be in a marriage because they're not saying I don't want to, but sometimes I've said, hey, let's go have our freedom. We got married young. Why don't we live apart for a year? You get to do your thing. And he's like, no. He said, I, I'm content. I said, well, don't you, don't you miss sleeping with different women? And he's like, no. I'm like, that's very odd. So I think at the end of the day, your brain can have just as strong a connection. Yeah. Saying Stephanie, because I'm like, if, if somebody's wife is giving them a hall pass and they refuse to redeem it, I'm trying to understand why that's, not. That's when, your, that's when your value system is, is strong. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The, the way you perceive the world. Is that true, Jason? Is this a value system issue? Um, or you don't want no new new, no strange new new. No, just like I said, it depends on the guy and what, what he wants in life. You know, if someone's a marrying type and they like to be married, then they don't want to jeopardize that, you know? Um, yep. Yeah. Because it, say he goes off and does his thing and say you go off into yours and all of a sudden you find Prince Charming over, over him and then, you know, he's, so he's, he's asked out now. So, oh. you know, well, I, you I think that... Uh, you don't want to play around. You're saying when you have something very valuable, you don't want to risk losing. Right, exactly. Definitely. And, and I also think just to, and I tell, I tell the ladies that I'm around all the time when it comes to marriage, you know, being committed is a personal choice. You know, I, it's not, you can be as beautiful, you can be as talented, you can have all the skills, but it is really his decision whether he wants to be committed to this marriage. It's not my decision. And so that's why I'm, I tell these young ladies, you tell, he better not cheat, he better not that. It's, it don't have nothing to do with you. If he's going to do it, he's going to do it. If he's going to be committed, that is his choice. Stay out, stay out of his business. That's what you need to do. Very interesting. I do. That's, that's exactly the way I think of it. Do you feel that the infidelity is a deal breaker in a marriage then based on the I do. I do. I do. I think, well, you know what? I, I always say, and this, and this is just me, you guys, I'm not putting this on anybody else. There are two things just from my experiences with past relationships I've dealt with infidelity, and not in a marriage, but out, out, you know, boyfriends, yeah. serious relationships. Um, and I've dealt with physical abuse. Those are my two. Okay. You put your hands on me and another woman. I, at this point, I, you know, I just made 50 this year. I ain't going to even argue with you. I'm not going to do all this yelling at the other women and get, getting on her and why you like her or whatever. You know what? If that's what you want to do, let's let's divide this stuff up and go separate ways. I'm yeah. not going to hold you back because you have to decide, just like I have decided that my husband is the only person I'm going to be with. I'm not going to disrespect him by being with another man, even if I'm upset, angry, mad, or whatever you may be doing because you wasn't giving me the attention. That's a poor excuse. I'm in a marriage. I'm committed. If I'm going to go with somebody else, I'm going to get a divorce and do that. Yeah. But honestly, those two are my deal, but I can deal with anything. I'm not. And that's just comes from my experience, you guys, mm -hmm. uh, from being physically in, in a physically abusive relationship and cheating. I can't stand it. Okay. So I am gone. What's those that? two and I'm done. Yeah. What's your, you guys have the same deal breakers or what, what are yeah. your deal breakers? Well, I, I would like to interject and I share your sentiments because my whole thing is we don't have to do this. Yeah. yeah we, we don't have to do this. Wait, <laughs> um, I can let you go. You, yeah, you, you no. see her every day. Yeah, I'll make it easy. <laughs> yeah. We don't have to sneak around. You don't have to be coming in, conjuring up lies. I'm going to make it yeah. easy. I'm out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for me, because the type of relationships I have, they're so emotionally driven. Yeah. Uh, and they're so deep. that I think I would just feel so betrayed. betrayed. 
that yeah. I don't know you. Yeah. I, you know, who's who's in the Bible? They they did not um said I don't know you. Um Peter um somebody um, did not um say he didn't know Jesus. Yeah, Jesus told somebody that he didn't know them. Come or on, they, or they betrayed oh, something. Somebody. somebody. Well, yeah, so it's on that level where I, I would just think that that's just the ultimate sin. I, I couldn't I couldn't get past that. Yeah. Because I my whole thing will be why. Yeah. You know? I think the women, I think because like you said, the re- relationships are emotionally driven, that that seems like the ultimate sin. Yeah. Uh, that's that's not the ultimate sin to me. Yeah, and that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so, maybe because so, I'm like, not- you're saying Jason, hold on. <laughs> if you found out Jason was having an affair, you would just go on and do your, your waxing like normal. What 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 would happen here? <laughs> and Jason said, don't get me in this. Don't be messing no. up my stuff. If it's not the most, hey, <laughs> I think that I, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily see it as a betrayal. I would just see it as a fix. Like having a cigarette. I wouldn't see yeah. it as betrayal. I would think it had nothing to do with me. Because I know I'm that good. Yeah. Did you, know oh, you, you, you something doing something is something <laughs> going on with him that has nothing to do with me. So yeah, I, I would I would say right. that as him, you know. You're so right though, Shannon, because uh-huh. I think a lot of women and men when uh-huh. infidelity, and I have to preface this by saying that I, I didn't have that in my relationships. I've uh-huh. not yet in any of my relationships been cheated on. So I've never had- uh, To your knowledge anyway, right? Yeah. To hey, you lucky, you very lucky. To, to my knowledge and I, I would put money on it kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, go uh, ahead. Okay, okay. No, I, I would put money on it. Um, but, the thing about that for me is that um, I don't own this person. Right. You know, right. That, that he doesn't belong to me. He's with me by choice. I'm with him by choice. Uh-huh. And if we're going to be together and we've, we've set up the parameters of our relationship, these are the things that we, we want to, to grow in the relationship. These are the uh-huh. things that we bring to the relationship. Um, and along the journey, there are going to be some things that we're going to be shedding, uh-huh. you know, from past relationships or right. what have you. And so as far as cheating, I can't really speak on how a woman, you know, would deal with that myself. No, I don't want, I don't want infidelity in my relationship. Um, but if he did do that, if that did happen, then you're right, Shannon. That has nothing to do with me. Right. Yeah. That's a you, that's I don't take it I'm like, it, it yeah, just, that's an insecurity that you're trying to fill. That's something else that you yeah. got going on. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't want any parts of it. So, right. but is it a deal breaker? Would I bounce? Would I leave? I don't know. Like yeah. it may be, it may be something that is spotlighting an issue in our relationship. Maybe mm-hmm. there's something that I'm not doing that I could be doing better that I don't know. But um, I don't, I wouldn't say that it's a deal breaker. Like I wouldn't say that for me because it hasn't happened to me. So y'all got to forgive me. Right. That's true. It's like they're saying, they're speaking maybe from past experience. So they, that is still there, you know, right. Somebody betrayed you. So maybe because we haven't experienced that level of betrayal or we haven't put that much on it, we can be a little bit more objective. Yeah. But I really think that, um, and Jason knows this about me, that sometimes the reason why maybe my husband is so faithful uh, is because there is no pressure in that area. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I can let the dog go out and the dog doesn't want to go out. So well, get on out here on the grass and play. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's no, there's no, there's no like deal breaker for me. Cause I'm like, well, you've been married a long time. Mm-hmm. And I just think that would be abnormal. California's p- full of beautiful women. He's a beautiful man. I just yeah. think that would be abnormal for me to say, yeah. oh, you can never, I don't know what you're going to do, but um, it's not my deal breaker. I think it's a deal breaker for him. I think he would hate himself more than I would hate him to be honest. <laughs> I don't, I don't see it as a, I don't, I, I, a don't, I, don't I, I, that has never happened to me. I think again, things rely back on your, I'm, your, I'm not talking about your new husband. I'm talking about the first husband. My first husband didn't cheat on me. Oh, he, he married her after he was clean of you. Yeah. We're not going to get into that. She was harassing you during the marriage. <laughs> was no. that during the divorce? So, Yes, that's when we were going through our divorce. We, we were no longer start the so divorce. we're no longer husband and wife when he becomes with her. We're we're no what? longer physically 
husband and wife. We're now getting a divorce. So okay. we're getting the divorce. And then divorce. she came along. Okay, okay. I thought she was a of that. So while we're living as husband and wife, my husband, my ex-husband has never cheated on me, to, to my knowledge. knowledge. That's right. not something I dealt with. Right, okay. It's my value system. But j- just the implications when someone does something, even say if a person decides to start smoking after 20 years, uh-huh. and I'm not saying anything against smoke, a person's choice can still impact you. Uh-huh. And you're not, and you're not saying that, oh my God, you can never smoke or you can mm-hmm. never do this, uh-huh, but right. it's going to impact me somehow mm-hmm. because that's not something that has been a norm in our relationship. Right. So when I say it's a deal breaker because on my value system, not because right. I've been cheated on in, in my marriage, it, within my value system, I would think that would be up there. Because I, I think your value system evolves with age. I think well, that my value system at 23 when we first got married is not my value system at 51. I can see that. I can that's, see that. Because life, can. life opens your eyes. Life, mm-hmm. there's this wisdom train that comes with the years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you see people breaking up and getting divorced. And then I said, what, girl, what did he do? You had such a great marriage. Well, he cheated on me. I said, okay, because you were married 20 years. So what else did he do? Yes. Well, he cheated on me. I'm like, Oh my God, everybody's going to be divorced if you think you're the last woman he's ever going to want to have sex with. And some women, and I'm some women. I'm like, I'm thinking, what did she really do? Like steal money from the government and uh, yeah. put you on a porn? So I'm waiting for something really juicy. Yeah. No, he cheated. I'm like, oh my God, then don't get married. But, but some, some men are cheated. <laughs> that just seems like, a, I don't know, like a big, not like a big deal to me. Some men are cheaters and some are not. Right. Um, we know that if some women that is okay with their have their husbands having all I think a, a, a indiscretion is one thing I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a serial cheater. I'm talking about you screwed up. You had a moment of weakness. Mo- oh, moment of yeah. I'm, that's what I'm saying. That's a that's not a deal breaker to me. A moment of weakness. Oh, a moment of weakness. A serial cheater that's out there. In the pro- yeah, you don't want to stay married to that person. But somebody who had a weakness or a moment, like you said, could have been going through something. I think one of you said earlier. Why do you have a moment? I don't moment see that as, I don't have- see that as a. Uh, I'm, I'm with you, Kim. What's the- who, who has a moment of weakness to, to, to have sex with someone? Where, did it, where does that happen? Girl, please. Probably about, probably about 50% of men. <laughs> okay. You know, an indiscretion? Like, where does it happen? How, how does that happen? The emotional connection. It could be work. I'm watching uh, Stabler and Olivia. That, oh, yeah. That, uh, Stephanie Wright does a Stabler. He's married to Kathy. Stabler. Uh, Olivia, well, Elliot, Elliot and Olivia. Ooh. Ooh. I have been wanting to see this. Watch SVU. Do you watch SVU, Melanie? No, I don't. I do, I don't but I haven't it. seen the new. The new mm-hmm. episode is when he, that was her partner for like 12 years. They were close. Yeah. He had a wife and kids. But yeah. now his wife is gone. They're finally confessing that they had feelings for each other because they relied on each other in dangerous yeah, yeah. situations. So when she's saying, well, how can something like that evolve? I just was using that as an example of how yeah. that going through something with someone outside of your cool. spouse could bring you a, some sort of level of a connection. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. emotional affairs, emotional connections. Now that, that in itself, I, I mean, it's more dangerous than a physical. Very dangerous. Yes. Very dangerous. Well, I think my ears would start to perk when I just felt an emotional right, connection. Right. Honestly, do you feel an emotional connection is more cheap, more of a cheating than a physical infidelity? Yeah, I, I, I would think so. I yeah, think so. I agree. That would hurt more yeah. with the emotional connection to someone yeah. than okay. just to have a, a flame. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's how I was looking at it. Like a moment of weakness oh. and discretion is not necessarily okay. a deal breaker. Yeah, I think, I think, you know, just as a little insight on the man's side, I think that for men, sex is not always an emotional thing. It's sometimes right. it's just like, you know, I'm going to get a massage. And like I said, like a woman say, I'm going to get a massage. Well, I'm going to get hooked up. And I'll feel good afterwards. Yeah, all right. Yeah. And then you're going to go home, you know, whatever else. But I think, so I think for man, sometimes he's like, yo, I'm going to go get a massage and I'll, I'll be right and I'll come on home. Yeah. <laughs> I think well, nobody's that, justifying it. I'm just being a realist because I see so many people that have built yeah. so much together as a couple. I'm like, what happened? Oh, he cheated. I'm like, tell me something else happened besides that. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, I'm not, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also not minimizing the cheating thing. You know, I'm not minimizing yeah, that. I'm just right. saying that the way I think a lot of men look at it is I'm not emotionally connecting to this woman. I'm just getting a massage, you know? Right. And uh, yeah. it's an act. It's an act. It's not, it's not a, a love thing, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And maybe that's why I have that kind of mentality. 
And yeah, maybe I agree. And I think maybe, women use sex as love. Yeah. Men use sex just as a pleasure, like a, a right. I've read so many articles that say that. And that's why it kind of changed my perspective. I was like, I've read so many articles and I meet so many women who are throwing the marriages away for that. And I'm like, maybe we got it wrong. Maybe it's not as big a deal as we're making it. Well, because I'm reading the science behind it, you know? Well, I mean, if you look biblically, you know, men yeah. had several women. I mean, if you look at it from that perspective, but I just, for me, I think it just comes with life experience and I just never want to be in that space again. And I just, for me, it's an ultimate, but, but I'm a Scorpio. So I'm, okay. I'm, I'm loyal. I'm deathly loyal. This is so, a, he's very loyal too. Yeah. Said, yeah. They're exactly. Very- even if, even if I'm upset with you, I'm loyal when and that's friendships and everything. Okay. And so when it comes to that kind of thing, I just think it's a total disrespect. Okay. Whether it's a fling or emotional attachment. Okay. So maybe I'm more liberal. I hope nobody's watching this thinking that I'm into open marriages. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't call some people saying, Hey, do y'all swing? We don't swing. <laughs> no, no. Mm-mm. I ain't down for none of that. Marriage. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there because I've read so much. Like, about okay, it. we got some real honest uh, discussions here. So, are you guys going to start watching the show now on a regular basis, Melanie and Kim? Well, like no. I said, I did watch it um, during the <laughs> summer, but um, okay. there's a few know. episodes left this season. Okay, so let's see how it plays out. It comes on, uh, I think Tuesday night. Stephanie, is it Tuesday? It, um, it's, I think it's Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Okay. All right, you guys. Well, thank you. And I'll, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up and I'll be sending Okay. You. Thank you guys. Nice meeting you guys. Nice meeting you too. Nice Next meeting time. you too, Stephanie. Bye, Melanie. Bye, Bye Stephanie. Bye, Bye, Kim. Bye, Jason. Bye, Kim. Bye Melanie. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye Jason. Bye. Bye.